the couple of things I've started doing practically yeah. is I don't prepare my messages alone anymore. Tell me about it. Oh, bro, it's the most freeing thing that's ever happened to me. Greetings, y'all, and welcome to Seek Things Above TV. I'm your host, Luch Cooney. So we are taking a look at something that's comical but tragic at the same time, man. This is like, it's, it's sad to me, man. This is sad. We're taking a look at Mike Todd talking about how he doesn't write sermons by himself. He does not write sermons by himself. All right. So we're going to take a look at that in a second, man. If you like content like this, y'all know what to do. Like, share, and subscribe. Ring the bell for notifications. Do the stuff that lets YouTube know you like content like this. But let's go ahead and hop right into this, y'all. This is, this is crazy. The couple of things I've started doing practically yeah. is I don't prepare my messages alone anymore. Tell me about it. Oh, bro, it's the most freeing thing that's ever happened to me. So I, I call in a couple of dudes. Um, what, what day you do this? This is Wednesday. Wednesday. So to preach Sunday. Sunday. Same time or kind of more like uh, on your call? No, no, no. I mean, most of the time it's pretty consistent. Okay, well, sometimes. So so I'll tell you. Sunday I preach. Monday, su Sabbath. I don't do nothing. I go get a massage. Monday, Monday, I text. I like on Mondays, man. Oh, what did you say? You don't ever text back on Mondays. Boy, shut up. Uh, uh, so um, Tuesday, I'm back in the office. I'm CEO-like. I'm finances, meetings, this, that, and the third. Wednesday, I shut everything down. Okay. Very uh, telling how he says, I'm CEO-like. He says, I'm CEO-like. And, and you know, it's, it's like, you can tell a, a preacher who has a reverence for his church and, and understands that he's just, he's just an elder amongst other elders, and he's just the lead shepherd, as it were, but he's an elder amongst other elders, and the church is not his. The church is Christ's church. You can tell someone like that simply by how they speak. And Mike Todd clearly doesn't see it that way. Like the churches, I don't understand. I don't know what the bylaws are. I don't know any of that uh, in that church. But I, I gather that he is, you probably couldn't fire Mike Todd if you wanted to. Like he couldn't be voted out by the dudes. I think he basically does run it like a CEO and he's the celebrity pastor that basically draws everybody in so it's like it's his show like transformation church is the mike todd show it's not uh we know it's not a church so it is basically the mike todd show and that is uh pretty clear in his mentality of calling himself a ceo instead of uh, considering that this is the office of an elder that he should be approaching with reverence. And yes, we know there's business and other things that go on in the church, but to call himself a CEO, man, CEO like, man, that's a red flag to me. Okay. So Wednesday, first half of the day, I'm just gathering content. I'm watching everybody because I get inspired by people who do what I do. And I think this is a lost art in preaching because everybody, uh, uh, warns against it because they don't want people to start sounding like people but it's like basketball players play with basketball players like wh like it where great. it where in the world do you like you only shoot by yourself and you only defend yourself like it's a good take you're weak like it's a good like, take so I heard that I listen to everybody it, it, it's not a, a set group of people yeah, yeah. but like I'm watching see what's going what's what's happening I, I, because it shot it inspires you it inspires me and it it speaks to me yeah. like, like, there's so many times I've texted you and I'm like, bro, you served me yesterday. You're like, bro, you listen to my stuff. I'm like, like, bro, that, that, that was phenomenal. Scrub through. Yeah, like, but so. Okay, so here's the thing. It's like he's already made it clear that he doesn't write his sermons alone, right? We're, and we're getting to that. We're getting to that part now where, I mean, he doesn't write his sermons alone, right? He has a team of guys, right? And so how much work is he actually doing, right? How much work are you actually doing if – you know, Wednesday now, you're just watching videos. And then when it comes to actual writing, there's other people writing with you or for you. Uh, we don't even know to what level that is. As we know, there's actual um, agencies or whatever they're called who write sermons for pastors. Like there's teams who do that. This was a, uh, something that was a scandal in uh, the Southern Baptist Convention when um, Ed Litton, who I, I guess he was the, the leader or whatever at the time, was accused of basically plagiarizing his sermons because he, he had the same kind of stuff that other preachers had. And, you know, basically they were just changing the stories, right? The little anecdotes in the sermons. So 
this is this is a practice that is frowned upon. Okay, it is frowned upon, and for good reason. And we'll go a little bit further into that. But man, so you're you're writing stuff. You're, you're you know get your massage on Monday. You come into office on Tuesday. You're just doing the CEO thing. You so you haven't written anything, and then on Wednesday now you're just watching stuff, and then the rest of the week is other people are now writing like this is this ain't it man this ain't it to me this i i mean yeah let's let's just keep watching man let's just keep watching but so first half of the day i'm just i'm just gathering yeah ideas ideas and content and i'm all through I, when i sit in any sermon that's one of the things i try to teach all of our guys on our team it's like bro if you want to preach yeah you should sit there if you have to hear this in our in our case I know that he be preached three or four times yeah, yeah. in multiple services. But you know, it's ones or three services. It's like I used to always teach about like how to take notes differently. Yeah. Like take notes first on what they said. Second time take notes on what you would say. Yeah. Start finding things. Because I always, if I hear you preach, it's like, oh, that line or that thought cracked open yeah. something for yeah. me. Yeah. That's kind of I think what you maybe say. Like, little things are kind of giving you pockets. Yeah. Like I'm gonna go down that route, right? Well, I mean, just like and I'm using the basketball analogy, but just like if somebody jab steps, yeah. like I'm not gonna do it just like them. But I saw that, wow, and I saw that tool. I didn't know that, I didn't know that was a tool that I, I could that use. A move. That For me, I didn't know that. That's a move that I could add to my repertoire. So that is Mike Todd explaining his whole little strategy for his week and how it ends up being, you know, everything that he goes through and then how he writes with a team at the end of the day. Now, listen, y'all. This is further proof like we've heard him say before, we've heard Mike Todd say actually before that he does not like studying the word of God. The dude does not like studying the word of God. And so from that alone, like if you're not somebody who is in love with the text, in love with the scriptures, in love with going deep, in love with the original languages and learning more and, and just developing your hermeneutics being more solid, having more knowledge of just everything, different aspects of theology, knowing all that stuff. If you're not in love with all that, and then if you don't have the burden where it's like, man, I have a a burning desire to now teach people, to preach, to, to tell them the word of God, and with, with the goal in mind of proclaiming the gospel, Right. With the goal in mind of proclaiming the gospel and proclaiming Christ and him crucified. Right. As as Paul said, you know, he said, I determined to know not nothing else but Christ and him crucified. I didn't come to you with anything fancy. I didn't come with this. I didn't come with that. And this what you're seeing is the opposite here. OK, he doesn't have the heart. I was I was explaining earlier. He doesn't have that heart. So I don't see him even having the qualities Besides the character and the lack of knowledge and the immaturity, I don't even see him having the qualities of somebody who, who, who should be a pastor. He doesn't have the qualities. And then, unlike Paul, he wants to na now add all these other things to his sermons, as we've seen, right? It's not just simply the team helping him write. I don't even know how much more the team actually has input into how elaborate the stages are and all the other stuff that goes on. Because if, if they're the ones telling him like, yo, yeah, we you should just sit there, sit there in a barbershop chair. Like, that's dope, that's dope. Yeah, that's dope, that's dope. If they're the ones telling him that, man, then th them dudes need to just be fired. Or don't call them dudes again. Like, like, people who go to Transformation Church should hunt these people down and like f tell them never to come back to the church. Never to come back to church because if they're the ones responsible for that nonsense that goes on, and ultimately, of course, he's responsible because he's the pastor, but if they are adding fuel to the fire that aids in this end result that we see, which is always this these theatrics and this nonsense that goes on, these guys are also trash. I'm sorry to say, but these guys are also trash, whoever he's writing his sermons with. And he's clearly not going to somebody who is going to challenge him and tell him like, look, no, you, this is not how to exegete this pax, passage. He's not going to real expositors. He's going to people who know how to excite crowds and to 
you know, make them keep coming back week after week and basically leaving the same way they came in. That's basically who he, he seems to be riding with. And the folks that he's riding with, that seems to be the, the skill that they have too. So, man, to me, this is a dereliction of duty. I look at this as an absolute dereliction of duty, a pastor, a man who is not in love with the word of God, a man who is not willing to spend 40 to 60 hours like most pastors would in the text preparing a sermon. Like, where is the love of you sitting down and discovering things about God's word for yourself? And I'm not saying that you can't you can't call up somebody and say, hey, you know, what do you think the, the Greek says here, man? What do you think about how this, like this word, da, da, da. like, I'm not saying you can't do that or even share ideas and you know, get, get some extra thoughts or something. I'm not saying that you can't get some kind of uh, guidance or, or, or anything like that at all. That's not what I'm saying. But for you to now make this a regular practice and have a team and you're not willing to put the work in yourself. Nah, man, like that, that's, that's that's a red flag for me and that that is not gonna work that is not gonna work yet another reason not to listen to mike todd yet another reason right there so let me know y'all's thoughts in the comment section below i would love to hear from y'all don't forget to like share and subscribe tell a friend to tell a friend and if then you have been raised with christ seek the things that are above where christ is seated at the right hand of god Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. All right. God bless y'all. And I'll see y'all on the next one. Peace.